If you would turn with us to Luke chapter number 2, Luke chapter number 2, and in case any of y'all were wondering, I understand the pressure that I'm under. I know that... 80% of you or more knows what's over there, and you're hungry, and you're hoping that it's a good sermon, but you're hoping that it's a quick sermon. (laughs) Carol, I thought you loved me. Luke chapter number 2, and we'll begin in verse number 25. The Bible says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word. We thank you and praise you for the salvation that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for this assembly this morning. We praise you, Lord, for the opportunity to come and worship you. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us, not only through the reading of thy word, but also the preaching of thy word. Lord, you know where each and every one of us are. You know what we're going through. You know what burdens us. You know what frightens us. You know what overwhelms us. You know what brings us joy. Lord, you know all about us, and I pray, Lord, that you would take the message that you've laid on my heart, help me by thy power to preach it, and speak to each and every person this morning with your word. Well, thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to preach to you this morning on Simeon and Anna's first Christmas. Now, before I get going... I'm going to let you know that most scholars believe that in verse number 27, Jesus was between 30 to 40 days old. So I don't want you to leave here getting confused and saying that crazy preacher thinks that Simeon and Anna was there at the birth of Jesus. But this is the first time that Simeon and Anna lay eyes 
on Jesus. And I want to preach to you this morning about these two characters that we see around the birth of Christ. Not much is said about them in Scripture, but we can learn some things about them and learn some things from them. The first one that we meet in verse number 25 is Simeon. The name Simeon means hearing. Eastern Orthodox tradition states that he was one that was involved with translating the Hebrew Bible into Greek. And they say that when he came to the promise in Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. He struggled with that. He didn't know if he understood it correctly. And so he paused. And the Holy Spirit started working in his heart. And this is not fact that we know of. This is not history that we know of. And this is certainly not Bible. But that tradition states that it was at this time that the Holy Spirit gave him the promise. You're not going to die until you see the Messiah. I say all that to say that Simeon was a learned man. History tells us that this Simeon was probably the father of Paul's tutor that we meet later in the New Testament, Gamaliel. He became president of the Sanhedrin in A.D. 13. And if you go and you read the Mishnah, which is the record of all the rabbis that were famous in Jewish tradition and in Judaism, you'll find that they left Simeon out. They left him out because Simeon believed that Christ was the Messiah. And if you read your Gospels beyond Matthew chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 2 and beyond Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter number 2 where we have recorded for us the account of the birth of Christ, you'll see that it was the Sanhedrin, it was the Pharisees, it was the Sadducees that hated Jesus. They tried to silence Jesus. They tried to render Him ineffective. And ultimately, the Romans crucified him on the recommendation of the religious leaders of Israel. So there's no historical record of Simeon. But as we keep on looking past his name, we see that he was just. That means that he was righteous in his dealings with his fellow man. You see, if I believe I'm going to treat people in a way that lets them know that I believe. Amen? Let's go back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders of the day in which Jesus not only was born, but lived. Oh, they said they believed. They believed in God. They believed in Jehovah. They believed in Abraham and the prophets and Moses and the law. But when you read about them in Scripture, as the Gospel gives us the account of, you'll see that they didn't really care how they treated their fellow man. Simeon was just. The Bible says not only was he just, but he was devout. Simeon had a proper relationship and a testimony with his fellow man. But the Bible says that he was devout. That speaks of his relationship with God. That word devout has to do with reverence. 
You see, what you do internally and privately with your God shows up in your outward actions. That's a biblical principle. That's not a pastor's opinion. It was true in Simeon's life. The Bible says that the Holy Ghost was upon him. This is before we as believers received the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation. Simeon was living just as David, King David, lived in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament saints would say, and David said in the Psalms, Lord, take not thy spirit from me. We now see that Simeon lived under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in verse number 36, there's another character that was there that day, and that is the character of Anna. We've seen what we can know not only from Scripture, but also from history concerning, concerning Simeon. But here is someone who is completely different. Simeon was a man. A learned man. The Bible tells us a lot about his character. He was just devout. The Holy Ghost was upon him. And now we see Anna. Obviously different than Simeon. She's a woman. Well, thank you. Her name means favor or grace. And I want you to listen as we go through what we can learn about Anna. Her name means favor or grace. We know that she's the daughter of Phanuel. Her dad's name means, and I love this concerning the story, the face or appearance of God. That's what her dad's name means. The face or appearance of God. And her name means favor or grace. And she gets to look into the face of God. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says not only was she the daughter of Phanuel, she was of the tribe of Asher. Asher is one of the lost tribes of Israel. And no one of note from that tribe is mentioned in the Bible except Anna. Isn't that something? We have Simeon, a learned man, later becoming president of the Sanhedrin. And then we have somebody that everybody else thought was a nobody. Her tribe didn't matter. When we look at her life, it was a life of sorrow. It was a life that on the outside looking in, we would say there's not a lot of joy in the life of Anna. Not only was she someone who was named grace and favor, her life looked like from the outside the opposite of that. But yet, she's there on this day. There's one other thing that we see. She was a prophetess. I want to give you an afternoon homework assignment and report back to me by 6 o'clock tonight. I want you to read Genesis through Revelation 
and write down every prophetess that you come across in the Bible. Okay, you're not going to do that, so I'll tell you, there's not a lot of them mentioned. There are some, but there's not a lot, and Anna probably is the only one that she knows. You say, well, what's a prophetess? Well, a prophetess is a woman who has been called to proclaim a divine message. Dr. Herbert Lockyer said this about Anna. She became, and you'll like this, Miss Shirley, she became the first Christian missionary of history because of this passage right here. Can you imagine being Anna? Named Grace. And we're going to get into her life in a little bit. Named Grace. Named Favor. Raised into this world and brought into this world and trained and lived under a father whose name was the face of God. And she's been given a calling. And then she got married. And she was happy for seven years. And her husband died. And now she's been a widow for 84 years. I wonder how many days of those 84 years she said, I thought my name was Anna. I thought that I had favor. I thought that I had grace. I thought that I had a calling. I thought that I was going to see the face of God. 84 years. If she got married at the time when most Hebrew young ladies at this time got married, on this day that we meet her in Luke chapter 2, she's between 105 and 110 years old. You see, that's the people that we see when we look into the lives of Simeon and Anna. But I want you to see their preparation. And I'm probably only going to get to this part of the sermon. We'll finish this sermon tonight because I don't want your stomachs to overpower your ability to hear the message. We'll finish this tonight, but I, I'm, I want you to see the preparation that they made. Simeon and Anna, first of all, received a promise. The Bible says in verse number 26 that it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. We don't know how old Simeon was. If you go get a book, whether it's a commentary on the Gospel of Luke, a book about Christmas and all the characters, a Bible encyclopedia, most scholars, authors, and people that have anything to say about Simeon would call him old. But we don't know. The Bible does not clearly say. There are things that lead us to believe that he was. And if you were to ask me, Pastor, was he young or old? I'd probably lean toward old. But he was given a promise that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. Think about that. You say, well, what was the promise that Anna was given? I just preached it to you. She was named grace and favor. She was, her father was the face of God. That was the name, the appearance of God. She was given a divine calling. And there she was with a promise, thinking, God's going to do something with me. God's going to do something with me. But when is it going to happen? When is it going to be realized? When is it going to be something that I know that this 
whole thing is going to be fulfilled. I'm waiting because I have a promise. I think back over in Scripture, how many people we meet in the pages of Scripture that were given a promise, and the promise came, but the fulfillment of that promise took years, sometimes decades, but they stayed faithful to the promise that God gave them. What do I do, preacher, if I feel like I've got a promise from Scripture? What do I do if I feel like God has worked something in my heart? What do I do if if I know that there's something for me that God has to do, but at this moment in time, I don't know when it's going to be fulfilled? Well, they didn't just sit around and wait for the fulfillment of the promise with their arms folded and not moving. They prepared themselves. The Bible says this about Simeon. Look at the words in Scripture. In verse number 25, the Bible says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That word waiting means to eagerly anticipate. When I think along these lines, I always think about the father of the prodigal son where the Bible says that when that son was a great way off, He saw Him coming. I always think about that because you cannot see somebody coming a great way off unless you are in place to see them. And I think about that, how when that prodigal son left in anger and in rebellion and said, I want what's mine and I'm going to take what's mine and I'm going to do what I want to do, the father, probably from the time that that prodigal son disappeared over the horizon, the father said, he's going to come back. He's going to come back. He's going to come back. And he was there. And when the son appeared... Just as a little speck way out there on the road, the Bible says that the Father saw him a great way off. You see, that is a good picture of waiting for something. We've got children in children's church right now, and oh, I love Christmas because I like to see the magic of Christmas in the face and the eyes of children. The decorations start going up, and I remember Nathan and, and his siblings as they were little in the house, the decorations would go up and the tree would go up and get trimmed and the lights, and they kept looking, and they kept looking, and all of a sudden there'd be a present under the tree. And then another present under the tree. And they couldn't wait for Christmas. Mom and dad, we get up early every day of our lives. And the kids like to sleep in as long as they can every day of their lives. But there's one day a year when I want to sleep in and they want to get up early. You know why? Because they're wait. They can't wait. They're eagerly anticipating Christmas morning. Simeon was waiting for the consolation. He was eagerly anticipating because he had this promise that he would not die. The Bible goes on to say that not only was he waiting, but he was receiving. The Bible says it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. I don't know if he made that public. And child of God, I don't know if you're under the sound of my voice right now and you know what it is to be impressed in your spirit by the Holy Spirit of something that God wants to do or God is going to do and how God can use you. Maybe you make that public, maybe you don't, but you've got to be willing to receive what God has for you. Simeon received that promise. Not only that, he followed. The Bible says, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. Don't raise your hand. Ask yourself this question privately. Did I come to church today by the Spirit of God? That's to be a good way to go to church, amen? When you walk in, you can say, I came by the Spirit of God. I was moved by the Spirit of God. I'm following the Spirit of God. And that's how He went. Anna. Look down at verse number 36. 
the Bible says that she was of a great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity and she was a widow of about four, sco- four score and four, 84 years she was a widow. The Bible says that she departed not from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. Her patience. Simeon was waiting and receiving and following and Anna never stopped hoping. Never stopped worshiping. Never stopped praying. I pastored in my first church a lady, Wanda McClintock. She got saved. And she started praying the day she got saved. She started praying for her dad to accept Christ as a Savior. She prayed that every day for 38 years. And 38 years after she got saved, her dad got saved. You say, preacher, what are you saying? Sometimes we can't stop hoping. We can't stop praying. We can't stop worshiping. There's a promise But it also requires our patience. And Simeon kept on and kept on. And Anna kept on and kept on. I'm going to finish this tonight, but the Bible says in verse 28 that Simeon took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God. And he said, now... Lord, I can go in peace. Why? The promise has been fulfilled. I plan on having a great Christmas this year. I hope you plan on having a great Christmas this year. But wouldn't it be wonderful from a heart of worship that we had a Christmas like Simeon had? As we gaze into the face of Jesus, not the baby Jesus as Simeon did, but as we gaze into the face of our wonderful Savior through the eye of faith, and just picture Him, and thank Him, and worship Him, and bless Him for what He's done for us. Simeon said, I can go now. Go back to my children. Every year they had something when they were growing up. I got to have this. Oh, I want this. And if they got it, boy, Christmas was made. I was like that as a kid. You have a bunch of things you write down on a list, but there's one you really, really want. And if you get it, oh, What a Christmas. But you know what made this Christmas for Simeon? He took up Jesus in his arms. And he looked into his face. And he said, I can go home now. Lord, I can go. The promise has been fulfilled. Anna, look at this, and I'm done. Anna said this. She came in that instant. There's no way that Simeon and Anna didn't know each other. She comes in and she sees Simeon and this young married couple with a baby. Mary's doing what all the women of her age was doing as they had babies. They were coming to offer their offering for their purification. But she sees Simeon talking to these two. And she ran over. I wonder if she saw him just from across the courtyard. I wonder if she started thinking, is that him? Is that him? And she runs over it and she says, the Bible says that she gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Somebody who said, well, Simeon said all kind of things. 
Anna didn't say anything. Read your Bible. She said likewise. She blessed God too, amen? She praised God too. Simeon spoke to Joseph and Mary. Anna gave thanks to the Lord and spake of Him to all them that looked for redemption in Israel. What a Christmas. Maybe 40 days late, but what a Christmas. Grace came to fruition. Favor came to fruition. She, the daughter of the appearance of God, got to look into the face of God. And she got to tell everybody that came by her, He's here! He's here! He's here. Part two will be tonight. You say, preacher, what's the point of this message? Just historical facts and meeting people in the Bible? I want you to have a Christmas spiritually like Simeon and Anna had a Christmas. Amen? Let's stand together this morning. Lord, I'm coming home is our invitation. Lord, I'm coming home.